Hey there, I'm Marina Orms, the founder of Astrology Heals at astrologyheals.com. And uh, we've got this wonderful playlist for you uh, focusing on astrology for nurses and holistic healers and anyone who's on a holistic healing path who wants to know some of the background behind how astrology can be used as a healing modality. Uh, it's a support in our healing journey. It supports us in our personal empowerment, awareness, and just knowing how we can uh, best support ourselves as we uh, deal with some of the challenges life brings, whether that those are uh, illness or injury or whether it's something else happening in your life, all of it impacts your own whole self wellness, your well-being in mind, body, spirit, and emotion. So that's what we're talking about here. And today I wanted to um, share with you three different ways that astrology can support a holistic healing process and break it down a little bit for you in terms of how this works. And then in future videos, I'm going to be uh, having uh, giving you some opportunity to dive into some of the different parts of our astrology chart, some of the different ways that um, you might understand what someone else is going through if you're supporting clients or patients um, based on their age based on their birth date, based on some other factors that we might look at. So um, so really approachable stuff. And uh, what I'm trying to do is make this easy for you so we can break it down. And um, there's definitely, you know, this mystique around astrology where astrologers like me who have been doing this for 30 years um, have uh, this you know, d depth of knowledge, right? <clears throat> and experience. And, and so um, it kind of feels overwhelming. Like, how could I possibly understand that when I don't have 30 years to understand all of it? There's so much to it. Um, but we can take out parts of it. I can take out parts of it and explain them to you that you can use right away. That that can be very tangible and practical ways that you can start right now to understand some of this stuff and apply it in a way that can be very helpful for yourself and the people that you serve. So today um, I'm going to go into three the three different ways, and there's more, but um, we'll start with the three. Um, the three main basic areas and the ways that astrology can be used. And so the first one is um, through a natal chart. And a natal chart, what is a natal chart? It's it's simply a map or a um a diagram of where the planets are at the moment of birth. And we have to remember that um, the, the location where we are on the earth makes a difference, right? The exact time of day is going to make a difference because we're going to, the, the moon is changing constantly. Other planets are changing more slowly, but uh, the time could be important if those planets are forming alignments or shifting signs. Um, so we want to know the time of day, but we also need to know the location on earth because uh, it could be day on one side of earth and night on the other side of earth, right? So, um, so we need to know where on earth we are so that we can see where the planets are in relation to the horizon, um, in relation to uh, where where we are and where we physically are is what's relevant to us. And if you think about it, getting deep here, <laughs> but if you think about it, um, you your time and place is is very unique. Nobody can occupy the exact same place that you occupy you take up space maybe very small if you think about the the vastness of the earth but anyway that point in time and place is you and you occupy that time and place and that's why um the 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 chart the astrology chart or the natal chart is relevant to you at a particular time and place and so we don't need to know the exact house or address that you're born in. The city is good enough because uh, the planets um, 
uh, aren't, you know, the amount that that would change would be so minute that um, it's not really significant or important for us to look at. So, uh, so anyway, but, but more on an esoteric sense, just thinking about the meaning of what it means to be in a body and alive is, well, we could go there another day. Okay. <laughs> So anyway, um, your natal chart is a map or a diagram of, of where the planets are located in relation to you and uh, what is coming up on the horizon. Your rising sign is uh, the zodiac sign that is on the eastern horizon from your time and place of birth. Um, the location of the sun in your natal chart is going to be either high in the sky or at sunset or at midnight, wherever, um, whatever time of day you're born. So all of those things and much more are relevant and we can see them in your astrology chart, your natal chart. And that is a description of you. It is a map of your psyche. And uh, for whatever reason, again, we could get really esoteric here, but I'll try to, I'll try to keep it on task, um, is that we, uh, um, have this chart that describes uh, where the different parts of you um, show up in terms of the houses, which has to do with the horizon again. So what's what's up in the sky during the day, what's below the horizon. Um, uh, well, whether it's day or night, different planets can be above or below the horizon. So those are all important. What house they're in, in other words, what section of the sky they're in what their relationship is to each other, those planets, because each planet represents a part of you, um, from everything from your sun and moon, which is your, um, just in a really quick broad brush strokes here, the sun being your mind and your awareness, the, the moon being your heart and your inner state. Um, and then we've got Mercury, which is communication, Venus, which is how you experience beauty, Mars, which is how you take action. So um, all these different planets represent different parts of you. Some of them, uh, how they relate to the other planets can be significant if it's in a challenging relationship with another part of yourself, or if it's a, it's in a relationship that creates an easy flow of energy, those things can all be important and parts of your natal chart. And of course, uh, each planet or each part of yourself is in a particular sign in your natal chart that tells us how that planet shows up what what it needs how it expresses itself so if your if your planet mercury if your if mercury your planet of communication is in a water sign it means that the way you communicate is more in a flowy intuitive way um, not needing to be precise about words but more about the feeling you're conveying if your Mercury is an Earth sign, it's more tangible and practical, and you need things to be concrete and make sense, etc. Those are just examples. So, anyway, so we have the natal chart, and that describes for for each individual human being. The natal chart gives us a map that tells us uh, our potential. Uh, what's important to us, what our soul is learning, how we best do things, what supports us, what uh, what helps us uh, learn and grow, what it is we need to embrace to actualize our full potential and what that potential could look like. So uh, every human being has a, a, a a fullness of their own personal expression. And so how we step into that, there's not good charts and bad charts. There are charts that might create a more challenging kind of life, but each chart has inherent in it a potential, um, and each person has a potential that they can step into as they meet their own challenges to learn and grow. And where each of us is at with that is going to be individual and uh, how, but but when we know and understand what that is for a person we might be serving or supporting, we can um, help them make the most of that and understand where they're at and what it is that might be supportive to them. 
Okay, so natal chart, now we're still on one, right? This is one of the ways astrology can help us is understanding the natal chart, which is specific and unique to a human being, shows how they're made up, shows how they're wired, and uh, shows what they're capable of if they meet their own uh, soul lessons and uh, how they can move forward on their personal path. Okay, so that's the natal chart. That is one way that astrology can help us. Another way is by understanding where the planets are currently in the sky. Um, and so this is not about a human being. This is about planetary placements that are affecting all of us at any given time. So a really easy example would be a full moon. A full moon is is a full moon. It's happening for everybody everywhere on earth at the same time. And so the full moon energy is showing up and bringing us particular um, infusions of energy, particular opportunities, particular um, uh, things that uh, might be shifting, we might be learning, we might be experiencing, and how we can uh, understand and work with those current energies and it's going to affect each of us in our own individual ways but the way that it shows up in the collective is there for all of us so whatever is happening in the big picture um, evolves over time is happening in the sky for all of us and it could be one thing at a particular moment, but it's also the same for everyone 10 years ago and 50 years ago. And we can look back into the historical record and we can see, oh, you know, these themes were happening at this time. These, you know, there was a war then or there was the, this social movement or this artistic movement or something was happening that we can see reflected in the archetypes in the symbols of what the planets reveal for that particular time. And um, there's been some extensive research done by Richard Tarnas on the, it's, there's a book called Cosmos and Psyche. I'm looking at it on my shelf over here, um, but it's caught here. I'll show it to you. It's called Cosmos and Psyche. I love this book because it is academic. It is uh, scientifically based. And uh, it's the perspective of Richard Tarnas, who's a historian, and he looks at planetary alignments uh, in, in history, um, going back to the history, particularly of Western culture, and how different things show up at different times that correlate with what we might expect from the qualities that the planets are bringing us at that particular time that we can see reflected in in the uh, cycles of the planets and how they showed up at any given time. So that's really fascinating. Um, like I said, a really immediate, uh, tangible way to think about that is the phases of the moon, because we all experience those. They're true for all of us at any given time. But also we have these outer planets that create alignments and help us to see um, the bigger picture of uh, cycles, how we evolve collectively, what's happening historically, and get some insight into where we are now and where we're heading and, and how we can work with that most effectively. That is relevant um, in the collective, but it's also relevant for individuals, because when we understand what's going on, uh, we can work with that. And so a great example is a moon cycle. Moon cycles can help us uh, work on our own manifestation because we can work with that cycle and ride the wave of new moon and setting intentions, planting seeds, learning things. And uh, the, the cycle of the moon, which is, by the way, is actually the cycle between the moon and the sun. The phases of the moon that we see in the sky are reflective of um, the relationship and the evolving relationship geometrically between the sun, the earth, and the moon. <laughs> and anyway, when we work consciously with uh, that cycle, we can um, uh, get our egos out of the way to uh, open ourselves to the bigger process of what it is we might have to learn, um, how we might need to process emotions, how we might need to take action, how all of these pieces 
can uh, be part of what we are learning and how we are growing. Okay, so that was number two. So number one way that astrology um, can support a healing, holistic healing process is um, through the natal chart and understanding the natal chart. Number two is through what's going on in the sky at any given moment and understanding that and understanding how the cycles are unfolding, where we've been, where we're headed, and how to work with that. Number three is really how those two things come together. So number three is uh, the uh, personal transits. And what that means is you take your own natal chart, which again, is it never changes. It's based on the moment of your birth. It is what it is. It's yours for life. Um, but it does reflect within it um, the potential for growth. So within your natal chart, even though it's one thing, it also represents a spectrum of possibility. And are you going to manifest the lower possibilities or the higher possibilities? And so all of us have things to learn about how we can manifest the higher possibilities of our chart that doesn't change. Okay, and then also how we do that, how we learn how to manifest those higher possibilities is through these collective uh, planet cycles that are happening in the sky. And those also, even though they're true for everyone at any given time, they're specific to each one of us in how they activate our own natal chart. So when there's a new moon, we can look at, as uh, astrologers, we can look at what sign that new moon is in, what degree of that sign the new moon is exact. And we can take that degree and we can look at anybody's chart, anybody's natal chart, my chart, your chart, anyone's chart. We can take that degree and see, well, where does that fall in your chart? What planets does it activate? What house is it in? It's obviously in the same sign for everyone, but it's going to be unique to you. And so there are going to be some new moons that are more uh, potent for some people than they are for others, depending on where it falls in your chart. Um, there's a lot going on. And looking at those transits, because there's so much going on as astrologers, we kind of break it down to what are the important transits. So we look for conjunctions. We look for something that's happening right next to a planet in your natal chart. And that could be Pluto because it moves so slowly. Pluto has a 246 year cycle. So it's, as it's moving in the sky, if it's in a point, uh, um, a, a sign and a degree, a degree within that sign in you, that's important in your chart, if Pluto is moving past that point, it moves very slowly and it's going to bring significance to your life. It's going to represent a period of time when there's a particular theme of transformation going on in your life. Anyway, that's just one way that can happen. You can also have a new moon that is activating or conjunct a particular part of your chart. Um, it can uh, Transiting planet, transiting new moon can be... Um, uh, in a square or opposite a point in your chart, an, an important uh, a planet or another important point. Um, so there's lots that can be going on. And uh, that's the third way is seeing how the collective is impacting you personally. Here, my cat, she wants something. Um, uh, so those are the three uh First is the natal chart and understanding the natal chart. Second is the collective. We can work with that without knowing the natal chart at all. Um, and third is how the collective uh, planetary cycles and transits activate or, um, or uh, pass through, create transits to your natal chart. So, um, so in these videos, my intention is to break it down and give you a particular topic that you can look at and work with. And some might resonate more for you than others. 
um, you know, maybe maybe Venus is a is a really significant planet that speaks to you a lot, um, or maybe Mercury and communication and the way that we learn is is really relevant for you. So um, so you might find yourself drawn more to some than others, um, but I'm going to try to at least give you a taste of these different um, ways that we can use astrology, and uh, and how we can work with it both through the natal chart and also through ongoing cycles. There are also some examples of how um, <clears throat> even without an exact natal chart, you know, maybe you don't know the person's birth time, but you know their date of birth. Uh, you certainly know their age or at least approximately know their age, right? And so you, we can uh, work with Saturn cycles or Uranus cycles to understand based on someone's age, what kinds of life transitions and themes they're dealing with. And then when we bring it into even the natal chart, then we can see more specifically, like what are what is the way that that uh, life transition is gonna be showing up for this person. So lots of ways we can use this, uh, lots of ways um, that I'm going to try and make uh, approachable for you by breaking it down so you don't have to know everything to be able to use this information. So that that's a little bit of background starting place for us. And let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, please uh, let your friends know if that I'm doing these, if you uh, think this is interesting, I definitely want to reach um, uh, nurses, holistic healers, holistic practitioners, uh, people who really want to understand how astrology can be used as a healing modality and to support our mind, body, spirit, emotion, well-being, because it's so powerful when we uh, begin to see what it actually does. And to remind ourselves also what it does not do. Astrology does not give us easy answers. It does not predict the future, um, in, at least not in specific concrete terms. <laughs> it doesn't say, um, you know, is... Uh, Am I going to be in a car accident tomorrow? Is my cancer going to be healed? Like it won't give us those kinds of concrete answers. But what it will do is it will tell us um, what are the personal themes that this situation, as it is currently manifesting, is asking the individual to think about and, and how it's supporting our personal growth. Because we when we are on this bigger personal growth path, we really do start to recognize that things happen in our lives and they're a gift, right? Even if it's painful, even if it's challenging, often we can see it as a gift that is um, creating a uh, shift in our lives, that is giving us an opportunity to think about things differently, that is uh, asking us to reevaluate our priorities, attend more to our emotional, spiritual needs, perhaps. Um, so different ways that can happen. Um, anyway, and so astrology can't predict the future. It can't tell us what's going to happen. Uh, it can tell us in qualitative terms what the energies are that we're dealing with and what the possibilities are if we... <laughs> hi. Do you want to come say hi? She doesn't want to. She doesn't want to be picked up. Oh, well. Um, uh, so anyway, what the possibilities are if we uh, if we can respond to the invitation to expand our hearts and our minds and grow in consciousness and uh, per personal awareness, right? Evolutionary possibility through uh, awareness of our own inner process. Um, so that's the that's the gist of it. And uh, so I was starting to say, I would love to hear what you think. And I would love to hear um, what you want to hear more about. What do you have questions about? Because I can uh, I can focus on particular areas based on your interests, your questions. And again, if you are able to share this information and invite people that might be interested to um, listen to these videos, I would really appreciate it. I have quite an extensive network of, um, of nurses, holistic nurses that I work with through the Oregon 
and Holistic Nurses Association and, and other uh, connections that I have. And it's just a passion of mine to uh, support healing and to understand how we as human beings do this uh, healing work for ourselves. And uh, we have a medical system that uh, is very good sometimes at uh, <clears throat> you know the tangible things, the lab tests, the diagnostics, the uh, fixing a broken bone, you know, getting your heart started if your heart <laughs> heart stops, things like that. Um, but what our current medical system is not really designed to do is to address our soul's evolutionary journey as we go through these health issues and, and for chronic conditions, how we can, um, uh, uh, understand ourselves better support because the invitation for what is it inviting us to learn about ourselves to the ways that we engage with the world, the ways we find information, the ways we take care of ourselves. That is the um, uh, the bigger picture of, uh, of healing, right? It's, it's healing the whole self, all the parts of us and supporting um, our ability to experience joy and wellness and have energy and abundance and pleasure in our lives and beauty and all the things that make life um, a good place to be. So, okay, so let me know in the comments what you want to know, know more about. Um, uh, I'm going to just, other, uh, other than your questions, I'm just going to kind of go with the flow and what pops up and what wants to be talked about. And, um, and, uh, I'm going to talk some about uh, some of the science and the background of the the academic perspective and some some more practical sides of things in how to apply this, how to work with it, how to use it and uh, how what to do. You know, not everybody has a natal chart to work with, but there's lots we can do even without having that. So thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to share more with you and I will see you next time. I don't really know how often I'm going to post these. We'll see what happens, but, um, but keep an eye on this playlist and uh, I definitely have more to share with you. So I'll see you next time. Bye for now.